Hello my fellow paint monsters, how are you today? Today I've got something quite special for you. I will be reviewing paints by Earth Mineral Arts, made by Margo in New Mexico in the US. I'm afraid that this review might get a little bit boring as everything I have to say about these paints is entirely positive. I love these paints and in a moment you're going to see why. Firstly, the colours themselves. They're just amazing. They're quite earthy, rather toned down, which doesn't mean there are no bright colours, but they look just more natural. A lot of these are made from rocks, a lot of ochres here. Most of the colours are opaque or semi-opaque, but most of them layer beautifully. So even if you use glazing a lot, I think these paints are going to work just fine for you. Margot has a lot of experience with making paint, a lot of knowledge, and it shows. The paints are extremely high quality. They're very pigmented, mostly they're very easy to work with, they re-wet like a dream, they move on the paper beautifully, some of them granulate. In some of the colours there's a slight colour separation and I love this, I love uh, what kind of magic this creates. If you want to see in more detail what I mean, wait until the end of the video, because there are going to be more swatches and close-ups, particularly of the colours that do this. Maybe it's just me, but when I look at the yellows and, and the oranges, they just look filled with new Mexican sun to me. They sort of have this feel of the desert and, and the mountains, you know what I mean? They're warm and sunny. When you look closely at rose crimson, you can see that this is first of the colors that separate slightly. It's not as visible here as it is in the swatches that I made and I'm going to present at the end of this video. There's a slight separation into red and violet undertones. Violet hematite and Pueblo cast iron behave just the way you would expect uh, a hematite based paint to behave. They're pretty opaque, very pigmented, extremely intense uh, and you can clearly see the black undertone. They're also fairly aggressive in terms of dispersion. On this first page uh, you're going to see paint that is absolutely unique. I haven't seen anything like that anywhere else. Uh, I'm talking about antique silver mica, of course. It's texture based, basically. It's not really color based, it's texture based, mostly. It's got incredibly large grain. It is shimmery, but it's a subtle shimmer. And the binder Margot uses for this must be some kind of magic, because not a single particle falls off, even if you rub the paper with your finger. So this is something very special. It's, you're going to use this for special effects. You're not going to paint a painting with antique silver mica alone, but it's your special effects paint. One thing you need to know about this, uh, it needs a considerable time uh, to re-wet properly. I mean, like several minutes. You need to really soak it and it's going to take a good several minutes to actually activate. So if it doesn't seem uh, to be activated, just soak it some more and give it some more time and eventually it's definitely going to work. And the last color on this page, Cedarbury number no. 1. This is definitely one of my favorites, if not their favorite, uh, from Earth Mineral Arts. It's got an amazing separation into uh, yellow and green and it does seem to have a blue undertone, a blue texture that becomes visible, especially if you reactivate and move the uh, top layer of the paint. A word of caution, this color has been changed like a week ago. Margot published a post about this on her Instagram. She said she would publish more details, so feel free to check her feed. Uh, I'm definitely going to come back to this and I'm going to include more information in the text review on the blog, but the color uh, that I have will be slightly different from the one that's going to be available from now on. Moving on, Lichen and Sage is an extremely subtle color. It reminds me of gemstone paints. It's got a very slight texture visible, like tiny deep blue specks. You have to look really close to see this, and this color is very special to me. Fairy Wren Rust and Virginia Creeper seem to be hematite based, 
to me, but I'm not quite sure. From the way they behave, they behave just like hematites, they're opaque, the way red hematites are, and I think I can see the texture typical of hematites, the iron particles. But I cannot be 100% sure as Margot doesn't include pigment information on her website. I did not ask her about it if you're concerned about this for any reason. I'm pretty sure that if you're going to ask Margot, she's going to give you an answer. Leaf Green number 2 is a very pretty shade in my opinion, but it's slightly more difficult to work with. It is more thick. Uh, you need to move it around with your paintbrush and it doesn't work that well uh, with layering, so careful about that. This one is not the best for this particular purpose. I would also like to draw your attention to Black Earth Star. It's got an amazing range, it layers exceptionally well, and it creates a lovely, lovely texture. On this last page you're going to see two colors that are very very special azurite and iodurane as you can see uh, these granulate very heavily they have very large particles iodurane is partly blue partly greenish gray and it's got large dark blue particles it's fantastic for special effects and so is azurite i absolutely love this blue these two paints need a little more time to re-wet just Give them more water, leave them for a moment, and they're going to work wonders. As you can see, these two are not perfect for layering. They won't be smooth, and it will be difficult to get crisp edges with these, but very likely you're not going to like paint a whole picture with them. They're paints for special effects. Although if you do paint the sky, for example, with these, uh, I find that this gives the picture um, the air of an old grainy movie on analog tape. It's very atmospheric. One thing you need to be careful about uh, with these two paints is that uh, the particles do rub off. The paints don't stain. None of Margot's paints stain in general. Not the hematites, not the indigo, uh, not the crimson. They're perfectly safe. But these two, they don't stain, but they do rub off. Not much if you're just working in a sketchbook, but if you run your finger uh, across the paint when it's dry, it's going to leave a trace. So if you're going to use these uh, in artwork that you're going to sell, uh, you probably should use some kind of fixative. You could also try using uh, mediums like Aquafix from Schminke. I haven't tried it with these paints yet. I probably will uh, in next week's video, so stay tuned. It's a liquid that you either use instead of water when you paint or you add it to your painting water to make paint stick to paper better. I've only had it for a very short time and I haven't had a chance to experiment with this a lot yet, but I will let you know how it goes. It costs about $10 for a bottle and it looks like it could be very helpful if you've got some paints that rub off. Uh, one more thing, you can use Azurite and Adrian with other colors. These other colors can create a sort of a background uh, for the particles for, for Azurite and Adrian. I think this can create a very interesting effect, so you don't necessarily have to use these on their own. I'm going to show you some close-ups now so you can see the color separation in the paints, the texture, so enjoy. The packaging is exquisite. The custom-made tins, just look at the wax seals and the gold leaf. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. 
and two of the paints, limited edition paints, are not in half pens or on wax paper, but are actually placed on abalone shells. I mean, how cool is that? And the customer service is also quite amazing. Margot is very accommodating. You can talk to her, ask questions. Uh, she's got a lot of knowledge, so she's going to tell you everything you need to know uh, about the colors. And the dot samples she offers are incredibly generous. My collection of Earth Mineral Arts paints consists entirely of dot samples, which all of them are of the size of a quarter pan or even a half pan. And they're considerably cheaper than actual half pans. So this is a great deal. And besides, to each set of six samples, Margot actually adds one extra dot. So I ordered 18 colors and got three dots extra, each of the size of a quarter of a half pan. So you see what I mean. This is a great way not only to try out paints, but also just to use them for a really long time for a very reasonable price. And on top of that, the paints were uh, shipped really quickly and I got updates from Margot about the status of, of my order even though I placed my order around Christmas time so I was really impressed with that okay this is all I've got for you today next week there's going to be a color mixing and demonstration video featuring paints from Earth Mineral Arts stay tuned and visit Hungry Fork Paint on Instagram for a sneak peek on Wednesday also, after next week's video, there's going to be a review on Hungry Foot Paint blog, probably next Sunday. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, leave a small comment underneath this video, and if you like, you can also consider making a small donation at Coffee. You can find all Hungry Foot Paint links in the description of this video, as well as all Earth Mineral Arts links. I hope to see you next week. Bye!